Do you need two of everything? It, how important is redundancy? I come from a world where climbing has redundancy in some spots, but we typically only have one rope and then we're whipping on one quick draw and we've got one belayer that's hopefully not texting anybody. <laughs> I'm Tom Bentley and, and I come from the technical rescue world where we want two of everything. We want it to be bigger and stronger and beefier, but is that is that really true now in 2024? Because we've really a lot of technology has changed and we're doing some single point stuff. So we're gonna carry Tom's technical rescue book and we are gonna offer CMC products. And if you guys buy CMC products through us, it will help allow us to make more content about the, the rescue world. And so what shall we break today for this topic? We, we, we wanna test some, the master point concept. And How strong it is? <laughs> How strong is it? Um, Pull out the big piston. What, what does break? I, I think sometimes we do get surprised. And um, yeah. what's it going to look like when we start pulling big forces on a master point system where I have where we have two connections of everything on a on a, a machine piece of aluminum? So pulling strong stuff is tricky. We got a big fat pulley here that is going to be our two to one because my hydraulic, in order to use the top of the table, only goes up only goes up to seventy kilonewtons. So we start here, this side goes through to there, into the pulley. And this is gonna get pulled with a hydraulic ram that is underneath here, being redirected by some arborist pulleys. And this is some 5 8 inch AM steel because I think it's fun to break ropes with ropes. And I always have to have a soft shackle in the system or it wouldn't be a how not to video. We wanna do uh, a master point with two independent uh, anchor uh, components coming in we're going to say this is a unquestionably sound tree or structural element but i'm going to put two software ba basket hitch runners here two 40 kilonewton uh, steel carabiners coming in here our plate to get our master point and then now this would be where i would connect my devices so i'm going to have two cmc clutches right here how much force does it take for for it to fit <laughs> I almost poked my head around the corner. I'm so glad I didn't. Don't they rate these based on what the standard is and not what they actually yeah, they break put, at? They put 36 kilonewtons on here because that's the stand, that's the minimum brake strength number for auxiliary equipment and FPA. But that's, obviously, it's not what it breaks at. That's not what it breaks. That's what at. it has to break at. That's what it. Yeah, that's the, <laughs> okay. that's the minimum it could break at. This has a lot more deformation than I expected. I've. Uh, it seems like aluminum tends to be kind of brittle, but this really flexed to the point. And there's two distinct dents from each carabiner right here, and the discoloration. Very interesting. It's not reasonable to expect that we could ever generate 60 kilonewtons of force. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> in our system and how about these how about these uh black diamond dynema look these yeah. are so small <laughs> so small well and people are like yeah. that's what you're gonna use it's like yeah it's dynema on top of that i'm basket hitching it so it's a 22 kilonewton yeah sewn runner and when i basket hitch it around a tree this is these are the sh short ones I could take a long one around a tree. Almost that double. 44. The two of them together with 240 kN, in theory, 80 kN, we can see Ooh, that this was the yeah. weak link. And it, it, I don't know what the number was. What was the number? 68.28. Anybody that has any heart heartache over this, over this <laughs> one single hole, I hope that you don't have any questions anymore. That, that classic CMC plate is super good. <laughs> and it's not just a sample size of one. That's just what we did. They tested themselves plenty. I just met, met my objective here. I, I can go home now. Video's over. So your definition of super safe enough for a single point would be no moving parts. You know where it was made. You know, it, it's reliable manufacturer. Sure. Shout out to DJ Walker in Austin, Texas, kind of came up with that idea of an ISO 9001 compliant company, um, third party testing, no, mo no moving parts. What can go wrong with it? So you just finished your, what edition is this book? S sixth edition. And when did you write the fifth edition? Uh, in 2017. This is the 25th anniversary uh, of the Essential Technical Rescue Field Operations Guide. We borrowed a term from the climbing community on a, having a master point or focal point for our rescue system because now 
we're, we're really doing a lot of two tension systems. We're still doing single tension systems with a backup belay, but two tension systems really meet a lot of our rescue needs and they're efficient, they're simple. And that's when you have the tension on both ropes instead of one being loosey our goal is to, Our goal is to have 50-50 tension, if at all possible, to get it and keep it. What we're really worried about is our ropes getting cut, to be honest. Yeah. And so if we can keep the tension less at 50% on each one, we have a much better chance of not having an abrasion incident where we break one of our ropes. Now, Richard Delaney helped do some of those tests where he proved that having ropes both tight rather than one completely loose and the other one holding everything. And Richard was really a pioneer on a lot of the um, single operator, two devices, how to how to most efficiently get and keep 50% tension, um, how to create these master point anchors that put us in the right place for our operational line. Um, so he really did a lot at getting us there. Explain to me what a single operator twin tension system is. These are lever action devices and one operator can manage the brake side and have one hand on both actuation handles, easily control the tension on both devices with one hand. You're trying not to have two master points in right. order to have the single operator. So, so in rope swinging, we've, we've done this a bunch where we'll take two plates for everything being redundant because in rope swinging, at least everything's redundant. We're very careful about that because we don't know what we don't know. And we'd rig off of that. We'd actually rig it backwards and go like this on our high line and then jump off this. But you guys, how many people in your world stack plates? Um, well, when we started doing two tension systems, especially wanting to get close together, it, it's a natural thing. If one is good, two is better. The first people that I saw test it was Rescue 3 Europe and DMM. They tested stacked plates because people were stacking plates. And yeah. just something about it Even just doesn't seem plates. right. Yeah. And um, they proved that because of the thickness, um, it was causing mm. the carabiners to fail at a lower level than on a single. And so it was ineffectively making it weaker, irregardless of the fact that we cannot generate the forces in our rescue system that will fail this piece of metal. Let's talk about this. This is very similar looking to another device that we stuck in our store. This feels like two rigging plates in one. And this still mm -hmm. works for a single operator. For yeah, your absolutely. Two rope system there. It gets a, it creates that focal point or master point where our devices are close where together. We're gonna clip the carabiner to two different eyes, and it's rated for forty-five kilonewtons, which we don't know if that's what it actually break that or if that's just what they had to it's clip. Okay. Similar setup, except we've got the carabiners in two separate eyes. Fire in the hole. Oh, that did not break what it was supposed to. This is not what we were testing. This was not even part of the anchor. What sucks is it kind of damaged. No, that fiber's still attached. Oh, dang it. These are actually the best things for this high of force. Just for reference, we hit 68 before we started pulling again. What's the condition of this? Would you assume that it was ever taken up that high? I mean, I see stress marks right there, I suppose. I mean, it looks great, actually. You know, when it says 45K in, I figured I'd be able to break it with my 74K inside. Now, does it look deformed at all? I don't think it does. At what point do the other components start to fail first? Every individual component in the system is... More than you need. <laughs> way, way more than we need. Talk about, talk about overkill. So this other chamber has a much bigger piston, and let's give this a shot now. Oh, we broke two carabiners. Oh so, no, that's not good. This weakens the carabiners when you have a really fat I thing attached. I think have, maybe I no, it, it popped the nose off of each one of these. I think we're learning more about carabiners. I mean, that's eighteen thousand pounds. Yeah, that's a lot. Can carabiners break this? It, maybe not. We got some. Pretty good elongation on these carabiners right here. I'm surprised these are still in the game. And you can get the slings at hownotto.com. Yes. Let's now try the shackles. I hope it works this time. Oh, this, this are the slings? 
<laughs> it's the slings. So that's my definition of when you don't need redundancy is when you literally can't break it with the stuff you're connecting to it. We can't, yeah, <laughs> we can't break that plate. Isn't that the fourth time or third time that we've taken this up to? Either. We're incrementally getting to 20,000. That's 18,800 pounds. Oh, that is not the same shape. Look, that's a locking carabiner. <laughs> Why did they even put 45 on it? Maybe, maybe if they just test one hole it maybe is. Maybe one hole is 45 kilonewtons. Every hole is 45. We can't break it. I would like to point out how ridiculous this is in order to break that plate. <laughs> yes! 21,600. Wait, which way does it go? Is it really that deformed or are we missing pieces? 21,600. Divided by 224.96 kilonewtons. They put 45. Why, why did they even put 45 on there? It's 96 kilonewtons. Well, no, no, no. See, if you look, this rigging plate is 45 and that rigging plate is 45. There you go. <laughs> 96. We got yeah. more than I think the ropes would hold. And, and you remember, humans break before the ropes. This mm. is our master point. Whether mm. it's whatever kind of reputable plate that mm -hmm. you're using, it gets your devices together. It gets your two tension system or your dual main system in line with your operational line. Makes it much more efficient and easy to get and keep 50-50 on each line. Uh, how many pages is your book? It's 222 pages. That's not a a guidebook that you pull out on the rescue. That's just a basis point yeah. to, to help make training more efficient. Our setup should be happening in a, in, in 15 minutes mm -hmm. uh, for a standard rope rescue or a standard confined space rescue when, once the air brake or the truck hits and we take a look on our size up, the, 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 the briefing, the plan, the rigging should all happen in 15 minutes for the final final safety check to be ready to make entry or go over the edge. That's what we're shooting for. How often does that happen in real life if people have trained properly? I think it's it's, it's very realistic, especially on game day. People people rise to the occasion mm. on game day. Yeah. It's complicated training scenarios where we're like, oh my gosh, what is going on? Yeah, but, yeah, that makes sense. Grab your technical rescue book, grab uh, some Capto's clutches, squids, whatever fits your fancy at hownotto.com. Thanks for watching, and we're about to break some more stuff, so subscribe. Cheers.